We've heard of your arrival from many sources. Extraordinary. Capital City's president is considering signing an agreement with them for their technology. Earth is in grave danger. <laughs> Aliens, UFOs, and extraterrestrials? Do they exist? Have you seen one? The mystery around this question has been around thousands of years. Eddie, do you believe in UFOs? I absolutely believe in UFOs because I've actually had a chance to see about five of them in this lifetime. As a matter of fact, today we're discussing a real-life story about an alien that lived in the Pentagon. We bring you director Craig Capabasso to talk about his film Stranger at the Pentagon, which is based on a true story and a book by Dr. Frank Strangers. Welcome to On Air with Tony Sweet, Truth Be Told, where we believe an experience becomes a truth. I'm Tony Sweet, your host. And I'm here with my cohorts, Walt Lusk, Well Benali, and of course, the one and only Eddie Connor. Thank you so much. I'm Eddie Connor, the co-host, and Truth Be Told is sponsored by Conscious Life Expo. To get your tickets for their February event in Los Angeles, simply go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Plus, you can easily pick up many of our guest book at AdventuresUnlimitedPress.com, where we believe books can bring answers and also a new passion for knowledge. So let's welcome the director of the film Stranger at the Pentagon, Mr. Craig Capabasso. All right, we are here live at Sunset Gower Studios. I am here, of course, with, you know, we said Eddie Connor and Walt Lusk and Well Benali. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> no. Hi. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, yes, we are here with the director of Stranger at the Pentagon, the one and only. Emmy nominated for casting and now award winning director for Strangers in the Pentagon, Craig Capabasso. There we go. Capabasso. I'm Capabasso. Capabasso. Craig, how you doing? Good. How are you? I am good. Now, we're going to get right into it because, you know, these, these times go fast. And yes. so, all right. So, first of all, uh, let's talk about Valiant Thor. Thor. Sure. Found Valiant Thor. Thor. Okay, I'm on, I even have a picture of what he looks like. Right. Very and that, handsome. By the way, man. the photograph was taken by a retired Air Force photographer right. named August Roberts, who took the pictures those days mm -hmm. uh, at the Howard Menger farm. And if anybody knows, does their research. That's right. Is that the farm? Then, yeah. Howard Menger was also a major contactee, him and his oh, wife. Oh, really? And so I, I had the luxury through Dr. Frank Strange's to speak to Connie uh, way back when, when I started this journey. And she told me that they, they she called them the visitors. Mm -hmm. And she said there were always visitors at all of their UFO lectures. Sometimes they said who they were and sometimes they didn't. You know, and I said, <laughs> wow. you know, and I said, well, did you, did you know, you know, that, that, Valiant Thor, and uh, that was Vice Commander Dawn, and right. Vice Commander Zan's wife, Jill. She's the blonde lady, Beautiful. right there. And she said, "No, we d we didn't. Uh, you know, we we didn't know that it was them." Um, but Jim Mosley, who was also uh, a big guy in mm -hmm. the thing, who recently passed away, I was in contact with him through Dr. Frank, and he actually was there that day as well. Really? And uh, there's photographs, and I know which one it is of him because he was like a boy. He was oh, like yeah. A little, yeah. Very handsome like man. A, yeah, yeah, he was very or, handsome. He was. He was handsome. Yeah. I was, was going to say 18, handsome 19, alien, 20. not man. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, but they, the thing is, is that everybody said that there was something special, there was something different different something unique and they felt it well what, what what made you get into this journey on uh researching and wanting to put a movie together about a value well i i you know it's sort of that sort of fell into my lap i mean my uh -huh. spiritual journey began when i was 26 and i was spiritually woken up like um it, it was an earthquake it wasn't a mm -hmm. it wasn't a little okay we're gonna wake you up a <laughs> right. little bit it was a slam dunk Wow. into the realm of master teachers and mm -hmm. uh, unconditional love. 
Um, so it was it, it, so that was my journey, and that's when I st began writing the Tehran book, and right. it was a twenty five year journey. I met, uh, I read Stranger at the Pentagon in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I really, uh, I liked the story, I liked the message. Um, I liked the simplicity of it as well. But when I looked at the photograph of Valiant Thor, I just got goosebumps, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you look at that picture and you see that that's a perfectly, that is a created being, which is an angel in human form that doesn't have a belly button, doesn't have fingerprints, palm prints. prints, yeah. prints. Yeah. Any of that, and when look, I get the chills just talking That's about right. it, you know, um, and I and I have met since one, uh, four people who met him back in that time, and they all said the same thing. There was something so unique when he looked at you; he looked straight into your eyes, and he could see and read your soul history, mm. and you knew it, and you felt infinitesimal, and you felt. Um, as uh, and you felt like you were the universe at the same time. Wow! You know, you felt. Wow, that's you, that's an incredible. It, it's oh, an incredible amazing feeling. feeling, and and the women especially. There were uh, two of the women said that there was a unique fragrance to his aura that sort of enveloped them into this state of peace. You know, so um, I wish we so could bottle that. Yeah, yeah. we need yeah. that right now. Good old well, that, I guess that would Let's be called angel pheromones. Pheromones, <laughs> yeah. We angel could bottle pheromones. it. Right? We just got to find go. an angel <laughs> right. and scrape their skin. Yeah, just, just take a few scoops. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, you know, w you got to sit down. You got to sit down and talk with Frank. Yeah. About when? When did that first meeting happen? Uh, you know, I, I, uh, my casting partner was Joy Todd for ten years. She recently passed uh, mm -hmm. within the past yeah. year. Um, and uh, she used to tell me about a f uh, two friends of hers who saw UFOs all the time, and they lived in Sun City in Arizona. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they came out, and they were very elderly at the time. And, um, and the wife's name was Sherry. She was so sweet, and she says, you know, Craig, we see UFOs all the time. <laughs> and she <laughs> says, and you know, our friend, Dr. Frank. And I looked at her, and I went, strangers you know and she said yeah you want to meet them <laughs> oh, just like, like that and i went yeah okay you know so i thought it was going to be like a, a little fan lunch you know where i went to go and be a fan and that would be the end of it and i ended up bonding with him he he became sort of like a surrogate father and mm. a surrogate son to him um and um we talked on the phone almost every day. I had lunch with him once a week. Wow, um, that's awesome. And that's how the awesome. whole movie thing happened, you know, and I think it was perfectly orchestrated yes. because he called me and said there was a gentleman who wanted to make the film into a movie. You're in the film business. Would you go with me? I said, sure. We went. The guy was not really in the film business. <gasps> I checked him out. Oh. I asked him for his credentials. You know, when you when nobody has an IMDb, you right? Know, you know, <laughs> come on. O oops. You know, and you can't. Their their name doesn't even come up in Google. You know. You gotta you know. think there's so something going on. Yes, exactly. I called him up and I asked him for his credentials, and he said, um, you know, he said I I don't do business that way. I only do it on a handshake. And I said, well, then oh. you're not doing business with Dr. Frank. So I didn't want to tell Dr. Frank over the phone. So I took him out to lunch and I told them and I just saw this tear just fell and it's been his life's journey to make this into a film and he's had so many stops and starts throughout the years as mm -hmm. as we know what it is like this so and I you know and I told him I said you know uh, the book is little vignettes it's not really a storyline mm -hmm. you know and I said so it's a little hard to make into a movie and then all of a sudden I just start getting all these ideas you know these downloads that were coming in and I said, well, let, let me think about it. Let me just start writing questions down. And I said, let's, like, so we can either make a movie from your point of view or from Valiant Thor's point of view, but I think the world wants to know about Valiant Thor. So mm -hmm. let's start there. And then I just started interviewing him. I would just go over and I would just talk to him and talk to him and talk to him. And, um, you know, we just went through that. He would just tell me stories and tell me things and, you know, that. And then, um, and so, you know, it's the main storyline, mm -hmm. you know, and how, how this, uh, how all of the rewrites happened. Um, because people say, you always ask me, they say, well, is, is this everything that Dr. Frank told you? And I said, well, a lot of the main part is, but every time I did a draft, I would give it to Dr. Frank, and within a couple of weeks, he would say, you know, uh, 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 he always called him the commander. He said right. he doesn't read, he just uh, holds it, and he absorbs it, 
And then he would, so the first time I said, well, what did he say? And he said, he said, tell him good job. I said, that's it, no notes, you know? <laughs> and he said, no, <laughs> you know? And the next morning I woke up and all of the notes were like this spinning thing going around in my head. And I had, I mean, there was, it was an energy that I had to go to the computer and I had to get it all out. And then when I would finish that, I would redo it. And the process happened the same over and over and over again until one day after a couple of years, he said, tell him this one will fly. Wow. <laughs> so I said, OK. So um, and the short film came about because I, I Dr. Frank passed away in 2008. And it was very devastating to all of us. Sure, and I just yeah. sort of shelved it, you know. And I woke up one morning and, uh, you know, I, I was one of the casting directors on Sky Captain, The World of Tomorrow. I worked with the producer who did the Saw movies. Those movies were oh. actually funded because um, they made a short film and they accompanied it with their film package. Mm. And that's how it was made because then they could see what they could do with it, right? So right. I woke up with that in my head and I just knew I just started a little Kickstarter campaign. I said, I'll call in favors from everyone. And um, it originally started, you know, I had one of my students with his little Canon camera. And, you know, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jeff Jocelyn, who I hired to play Valiant Thor, I was seeing him on another movie. And I was like, oh, my God, he looks like Valiant Thor. All we got to do is put a rinse in his hair. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and... Uh, you know, he said, oh, my buddy's got a red and, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Because I investigated a red camera. And if so, if they even donated it to you, the insurance was $10,000. Wow. So I couldn't do that, you right. know. So I was like, oh, your, your guy's not going to shoot the film for free with this, right? And so I call you. He goes, no, call him up. I call him up. You know, Pierce Cook, God bless your soul. I mean, I called him up and he's like, yeah, that sounds fun. I'll do it. Do you know, so all these amazing people started jumping on board. We got James Cameron's visual effects coordinator. Who oh, came. man. We got the um, through two other producers. And, of course, I'm bringing producers on that I've cast movies for. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So right. we had these great relationships. And uh, they were all they're all symbiotic. You know, they're 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 into bringing up baby instead of fighting it, mm -hmm. you know, as we know, in a lot of movie productions. So. Um, so they got us uh, the green screen sound stages. They got us all the all the offices, everything to shoot at in one location for free. I mean, all of this stuff just kept showing up and happening, and you know, all of that. Eileen Davidson, you know, who plays Dina Thor, who's um, She's now a new housewife of Beverly Hills, by the way. Oh. And, <laughs> uh, and they all came to the screening, the one that you guys yeah, didn't yeah, come no, to. Yeah. But uh, all the housewives, by mm -hmm. the way. And um, uh, But, like, even when she came, she, like, brought, you know, a spread for it. Because we had, like, a crew of, like, 100 people that day. Oh. Do you know? She just, she went and she brought in all this food and bagels and cream. You know, it was mm -hmm. like everybody was just... Throwing awesome stuff in. So it was a labor everywhere. of love. It was a labor of love. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it was amazing. We did another campaign, you know, which, um, you know, to help us get right. through the visual effects stage. Mm -hmm. As you know, it was, you know, if I would have known back then, I don't know if I would have done so many visual effects because there was close to 90 of them in that That's film. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. So, yeah. you know, it's it really is uh, amazing thing you know and i think so. for that for this the story itself and i want to remind people that are tuning in or listening to this uh, later on that when we say story this is based on a true story, story yes yeah this is you know uh, an experience not not just frank had but many other people like many other said, people had yeah. and yeah. and in the uh, books forward harley bird who was a part of project blue book at the mm -hmm. pentagon for the air force uh confirms it all Wow. In, in yeah there and Harley Bird interestingly enough is the nephew of uh, Admiral Richard Ebert. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so um, yeah, so he com he confirmed it. You know, do I? You know, I've I my everybody always asks me if I met Valiant Thor. I say I always I say no, but I would like to, just like everybody else. Yes. Um, but the day I started writing the script, I had a dream, and he came to me in a dream, and he showed me the whole path, and he spoke to me, and I got to hear the voice that Dr. Frank always talked about—a voice between masculine and feminine that was strong, 
and soft and kind mm. at the same time, but made your whole vibration go, wow. Mm. You know, you're sort of like this. You know, it's really amazing. And I was so. going to ask you if uh, during this process, if you had visions or. I did. And yes. That's, yeah. yeah. I did. I, I had lots of visions um, and I would see parts of the ship. Mm. you know in dreams and i would see certain things uh you know i would amazing. see his office you know valiant thor's office which is attached to his bedroom uh by the way if anybody wants to while they're listening they can go to stranger at the pentagon.com they can check it check out all the stuff i just re-updated the whole website with it's pictures great website. from the, yeah. from all the stuff but on each page there's different photos mm -hmm. and there is a poster um that it also has the blueprints to Victor One because it mm. holds 200 people, <laughs> and there's 103 of these Victor class saucers. There's that's, Victor yeah, One, that's the Victor Two, spaceship. Victor Three, yeah. yeah, and they're stationed in and around the Earth. Doctor Frank said. And so as we're talking, as we're talking right now, we're watching the clip meet Valiant Thor uh, with, the, with his crew. So you're saying the ships? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You're saying the ships are in the Earth now? Yes. That's his. That's, that's where his. his. That's his. Yeah. That's where his is stationed. Yeah. Actually, you can. Um, uh, the coordinates are in the Stranger at the Pentagon mm -hmm. book, which people can get the book and the movie and all that on the off the website as well, and the posters and all of these things are out of print. You can't get them anywhere else. So um, the movie will be uh, available on DVD oh, in December, great. but people can do their pre-orders now. Um, but. Um, his is there, but there's the coordinates in there, and you can actually Google the coordinates, and you can go. It's actually a beautiful space, and you can see exactly why they chose it. But one of the things why they chose that particular thing is because it's the, it's the uh, perfect resonation for taking off and landing. So... Yeah. The, the first ship came in, uh, was it Alexandria, Virginia? Alexandria, Virginia, and yeah. That's whenever they picked them up and went, you know, take me right. to the White House. Yes, and, and yeah, and it was in a it was in an agricultural field on a Saturday morning at eight AM. Yeah, so that's, that's the right. perfect it's the perfect time to not create havoc. Right. Yeah. right. You know. Um, interestingly enough, that was, that day was Pat Nixon's birthday. So that's why Nixon was late actually getting to that first meeting. Oh really? Yeah. So um, because everybody was being called in, you know, after uh, after this happened. But you have to remember um, even even the police officers, as you guys saw how I right. depicted them in, in the thing, the minute they saw him, they just went, "Oh my God, this is like this is this is a universal envoy of peace yeah, and love." Yeah, you could tell it wasn't. You like just a panic, know panic, it's like, like wow, the the and they just and yeah. they had a conversation with him. They radioed ahead. Everybody that met him did it. Even those really are the president's words. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I have a nice feeling towards you, sir. You know, what what is your name? Mm. Do you know, be, because, you know, they just, they had that, you know, that feeling. Of course, you know, there's the other one. You know, there's of a course. lot of parts in the government that are a little leery, even though that they felt that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it would be great to be a, have been a fly on the wall. Oh, my God. And, oh, and, and actually, you know, we yeah. know that there's got to be transcripts and stuff because it was, they called it uh, Valiant Thor. I think the universal emissary is how mm -hmm. the paperwork was done up. Um, and it's got, a, you know, wherever those archives and sealed, uh, nobody's going to ever see folders, you know, mm -hmm. that kind that kind of thing. But George Filer, you know, Major George Filer, as you guys know, right. he, he started working at the Pentagon in 1961, he told me, and that they heard of rumblings of an extraterrestrial who had been there. Um, you know, had just been there, and uh, he was only there for three years, right? He was only there for three years, March sixteenth, nineteen fifty-seven to nineteen sixty, yeah. and then he left for a year, came back one year later on the same date, and has been here ever since, monitoring and all. But of that. not at the not. The but not there, yeah. no. But one never knows if, if, if they're he's actually contact. having yes, exactly. conversations mm -hmm. with. Well, I was going to say, know, have they have they said or anybody else said that he has came come forward and met with any current presidents or since that then? i don't know you know that i don't know I was, I, you know i mean it would be yeah. i would be very curious to know that as yeah. well i mean i would think if i were a president and if i could get guidance from a created being yeah. would probably be one of the greatest thing greatest wow. gifts that you can get in the universe <laughs> ever 
well, and, and to not to listen help. to one. Yeah. Well, and when he comes in, one of the first things he in the movie Stranger at the Pentagon that they're talking about is how we can help you um, heal the common cold or cure the common cold, a, the, reverse the aging process, right. cure cancer. And they're like, ah, we got that. Under we already control. have that. Yeah. Let us know about your nuclear warheads. Right. It's like, yeah. what? Right. And, and, you know, the thing that was different from the saucer technology that they already had from Roswell and all these things, these mm -hmm. captured saucers, is that these those were younger technologies. Well, you know, Thor's technologies were spiritual technologies. Yeah, yeah. The, these were run by organic brains. It was, a different, brains. It was a different race, wasn't it? It was a different race. Yeah, it was yeah. a very yeah, yeah. evolved uh, race, which we would say uh, would be fully, fully conscious. Um, you know, where that, that whole race, like here where we're living in duality and we're, we're working our equilibrium to become fully conscious, mm -hmm. you know. They're bringing us up to join universal society eventually. That's why they're here and, and doing all of that. Not so, in our lifetime. Well, the way the world is yeah. going. <laughs> well, there's yeah, a lot. Right. And, and by the way, um, uh, a conference I'm going to be doing November 14th, 15th, and 16th in Laughlin. Um, Jaime Masson is coming. Oh, and yeah. Jaime is bringing Jaime. footage yeah. of where all the, all the wars and everything that are going on over in the Middle East. Yes. That there are ships <laughs> showing up there over like crazy, and they have them all on film. I was going to ask and you about that And he's going to show next. that. So they're, yeah, they're, they're there doing that. So if anybody's in the, in the area and they want to come and see, George Nuri is mm -hmm. actually introducing me in right. the film oh, on wow. Friday That's night. Great. George Nuri. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. on Friday night I'm going to show the film and do a talk. Um, it's starworksusa.com, and uh, people can either do a day pass or – um, you know, or they can uh, uh, go for the whole weekend. It's an amazing lineup of speakers. I'll be on a panel as well. Right. On um, Sunday, we're doing a whole thing on Giant Rock and the Integratron because Dr. Frank used to MC all the UFO space conventions with oh, George fun. Van Tassel. So I went there with Dr. Frank many times, and he taught me all about that. And, uh, and then for anybody in the new year, we're going to be holding two screenings at the Integratron on the second floor um, on Saturday, January 10th. So you can That'll go to the Integratron.com and get tickets. Well, we'll definitely put that up yeah. so everybody will know. Yeah. Um, now, w is it true that um, Valiant, he had no navel, but his some of his uh, crew did. Yes, they two the different species, right? The rest of them did, the except them for did. except for Yanaya. Okay, Yanaya, Yanaya is a, a, also a created being, and Yanaya right. comes out of Melchizedek. And so, wow. so Melchizedek, in a in a nutshell, for people people like. Right. When people don't know what Melchizedek is, right. it still is like a vibration that they feel familiar with it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but Mel Melchizedek is the the spiritual university. So it's not far from Barstow, is it? No. <laughs> <You're> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, near the uh, more in the like the Mira system, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, mm -hmm. So M I R A system, right? Um, but there, it's um, it's where all beings who are ascending or who are going from graduating off of a planetary sphere will all go through Melchizedek to see what their next stage in learning is. Mm -hmm. And if they want to go learn unconditional love, maybe they go to Venus, right? Or they, you know, uh, they go to different things where they're learning all of these types of things. You know, mm -hmm. the one thing that sort of um, struck me really interesting um, is uh, that all the planets in our galaxy are populated on the inside. Hmm. And well, I've heard that Mars is. Yes, yeah, <sighs> Very much they're so. all populated. Even Venus is populated on the inside because they, they well, have Isn't a, that where women come from? They they have, from Mars yeah. or from Venus? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> In hot white tunics, right? <laughs> 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 but um, but they you know when you when you get these create these created beings together mm -hmm. and with their minds they can create these technologies that can create floors they're basically like giant motherships mm -hmm. yeah. and they have the things all all of you know all these master teachers taught me all this stuff that's yeah. in my book yeah. uh, the autobiography of an extraterrestrial saga I am Tehran 
because there they, you know, they have synchrotron skies. So when you're looking up into the sky, it's like you're looking up into the sky there, but they're able to keep a resonance field where you keep yourself in perfect harmony and your cells are in perfect harmony and that's why they don't age. Mm. So it's a, this whole resonance field and that. So if they are to go to other planets like here and that kind of thing, into to their suits. So if they're out, these suits also protect them. That's why Valiant Thor's suit, when the government tried to pierce it, they actually, he, uh, Thor, showed Dr. Frank, they tried to use a maser, which was the first laser. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a laser then. Mm -hmm. um, they tried to drill it with a diamond drill, and they tried to put acid and stuff on it, and it just all, nothing would penetrate it. And it weighed six pounds, including the boots. Wow. Yeah. I'd wear that. Yeah, I know. I know. Everybody wants yeah. the spacesuits from uh, Stranger at the Pentagon, know, right? by the way. Can I wear that? Can I wear that? It is kind of cute. Uh, yeah. how, how concerned is in, uh, Valiant, his crew, and and the the beings about planet Earth? Yeah, what's going the on? Human, human well, Earth. you know, there here here's the thing that, that I was taught. Because when I started writing the script, I, I, I in my meditations, I would say, you know, you're going to have to teach me how you think and how you feel. Mm -hmm. So when I was writing, when I would write the script, if I was writing about Valiant, I would feel his energy step into mine and I would feel what he felt and how he thought and the things that disturb them and that. And, and I have to tell you, when they do that, especially him, I would just sit there and I would weep for uh -huh. like a half an hour uh, yep. because it's just so breathtakingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so beautiful. Um, and uh, and then you know once I could collect myself, then I I would get in and then just start you know start the writing. But if you can imagine what it does to us, just seeing it on the news, mm -hmm. they see everything. Their ships are capable of monitoring and viewing everything that goes on. Which it is gets reported, and if they can intervene, they're given word to intervene because so it's like they, world ccv yes because there's a lot of <laughs> you know you know over the years yes. uh, we know that um craft have gone in and just taken out a whole military base said mm -hmm. yes. where 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 uh you're not you know not taking it out but you know um dismantled the weapons yeah uh, disabled. Yeah, disabled disabled the weapon. Uh, yeah yeah exactly disabled thank, thank you um you know so it's when they see these things, um, they weep, they cry. Oh. Because y you can only imagine what we feel like, but imagine a created being seeing beings doing this to other people. That's mm -hmm. pure, unconditional other, love that's other, here to that's help here. us get to that's that. Right. That's right. And it's not just to other people, it's also to other life forms to, yes. to, to, yep. to yep. animals. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Just fucking up the whole solar absolutely. system, y'all. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I, I recently, and I'm this is not off topic, but I recently heard that uh, the ozone layer over ozone layer over Australia is starting to heal itself. And I instantly popped in my head that the beings must be helping us out. Yes, yeah. They could they could do it in a second if yeah. they wanted to. You know, but this is this is our journey, and this is all the things you know mm -hmm. that we have to do too. I, I love that you you're know. saying that because a lot of times people will, when they're talking about God or right. aspects of Christianity or higher power, they're like, "Well, God knows what I want. Why doesn't He just bring me the relationship or bring me the extra money so I can get out of debt?" Right. And I think sometimes people assume that higher beings, right. uh, beings of light, who who are like them. They could just come in and fix everything we keep tearing up, but we have free will on this planet. Yes, but right. then we'll just and keep tearing it up and exactly. we won't learn. Right. Yep, we won't learn. And they're just holding the space, giving us that, you know, you have to love somebody unconditionally to let them keep effing up. That's right. That's right. And, th and they do. I saw this bumper sticker, and I'm just going to paraphrase it because I can't remember exactly, but it said everything. It said, I used to get mad at God for seeing all the starving, hungry children until I realized that I was God and I should be helping those hungry, starving children. children. So really that says it all because we're all God. Mm -hmm. We're all a part of the whole thing. We have these incredible master teachers. We have Christ and Buddha and, you know, Muhammad. We have all, all these great master teachers came to this planet to teach. Mm -hmm. And then other people took that 
and, and turn it into it and a, a it. negative thing, yeah. and then some kept it positive. Yes. Right. And so we have this weird sort of strange thing. So it has to come to a commonality of really where we all have to work with our heart to start ruling our mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so it has to come from here, and that's where the unconditional love is. And by the way, all the people who are having contacts and all the people who are having yeah. all these different things. It is, um, they, they're not, what they're receiving is heart unconditional love energy about consciousness. Transmission. Mm. Transmissions and things like That's that. Beautiful. It's not about, ooh, I saw a, an ET and <laughs> it was this or it was that. It's really about all the, you know, it's, it's about bringing our heart center so that we can heal the earth and we all have to do it you know, as uh, as as a planetary consciousness. So Ed, I've been working with a healer for a while now and um, who's going to be on the show soon. And when I, I as an intuitive, I'm able to see energy and interpret it and see different beings. I mean, from under the earth, above all, the whole nine yard and frequently, frequently what we would call extraterrestrials, and I don't mean the scary stuff, but the beings from other parts of the universe that aren't like the master teachers, if you, what, well, they are, but in a different way than we right. know, they just, they'll pop right in. They'll just pop right in like three at a time, like looking right over yeah. the wall, and they're holding the space. Yes. They're holding yes, the space because there's a non-traditional type of healing that's happening consistently to keep raising the vibration mm -hmm. but that's my intention is to receive that frequency his intention is to give that frequency and they always show up when we're doing that always yeah it's yeah it's always. fascinating to me yeah yeah it's amazing it's really really amazing and you can capture a lot of this on film now because they're actually the veil is being broken down that a lot of people are oh. getting it on film. Yeah, We're there's there's a photographer <laughs> that's been on coast to coast that could do that. He lives three month, three blocks from the uh, uh, White House and he has this really 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 fast camera and he was um, t tells to go places and he gets like one shot of something. And yeah. You're right. It's it's been That's it. It's, yeah. yeah. There yeah. Yeah. And so if you're just tuning in, you guys, you're listening to On Air with Tony Sweet. This is the Truth Be Told show. We have director Craig Capabasso here with Stranger at the Pentagon. He's the director of that. In studio. And he's also an author. You're going to have to pronounce that for me. Right. It's the autobiography of an extraterrestrial saga. And then it's subtitled I Am Tehran. And Tehran is, uh, is from the Pleiades. He is actually a uh, college-level... Um, professor who teaches messengers who go on incarnation missions wow. into other worlds such mm. as earth and yep. actually it is earth in his in his thing who uh, come in and um, and incarnate and then they're at a certain point they have an awakening and then they start to spiritually raise the consciousness so That's these are great. beings who are already fully conscious who then are stepping down their energy to incarnate into a younger world to help raise the consciousness up it's also about duality so yes. people i never understood duality until the master teachers taught it to me, you know, mm -hmm. and there there's a lot of great lessons from uh, the I am that I am. You get to go to that world, the first world ever created, which where, is stunning, where the first. Yeah, the first speck of light is still held. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's an amazing story. But then it's also about sort of like, you know, we like uh, we all love Star Trek and, you know, Guilty. Ugh, love it, <laughs> love it. And um <laughs> You know, so where Star Trek was here, this is out there. So right. this this is actually bringing you into the spiritual universe that's out there, and and the beings and the sort to of boldly go, to it, you know, <laughs> all those kinds of things, and um, you know, so it's uh, it, it there is a terminology of the extraterrestrial worlds in the back of the book. I yep. suggest everybody read that first. And I love that you have. Illustrations, illustrations of each of the characters yes. because that way it's easier to follow yeah. when you can picture it. Yes. But you're really great at describing each of the parallel universes or the worlds within yeah. the worlds, as it were. Which is yeah. important. Yeah. 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 And um, uh, everybody can, you can get it, they can get it on Amazon. Um, 
uh, or the website is autobiographyofunnet.com. Sylvia Brown did the foreword. She, you, she only she wrote almost 70 books in her lifetime. I met her, became dear friends with her, loved her dearly. She is like so I had funny. a reading from her like 15 years ago. Did you really? She told me I was going to do all this. And at the time, I was in Kansas City working corporate. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah okay, right, whatever. right. Whatever. <laughs> and here it is. And here it is. Yeah. See? So, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. So. But she uh, she only wrote one foreword at the beginning of her career, and uh, all of the you know she was with Hay House, Dutton, mm -hmm. Random House, wow. and they all wanted her to do forewords for their authors, and she refused all the time because she, she didn't came for believe. Craig. But she read and she read my book in a night. In a, in a wow. night. Wow. Yeah. So talk about I I, I I you know is just amazing. So um, there's yeah. there's before time gets away from us, I want to ask another question, and then yeah. we have a question in the chat room. Uh, that sure. Somebody, but in the in the film, there was uh, when the, he met with the secret society. Right. The secret shadow society. Yes. Okay. Yes. They they pretty much well they did they threatened him. Right. But it left it at that. I never really got to know whatever happened of that. Well, that's because I left a cliffhanger in the short film. Oh! <laughs> oh, tease! I kind of did that on purpose. Okay. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. why you yeah. saw him in you the brainwash think? machine <laughs> yeah, at the end, that awesome brainwash machine. Yes. I see that every time I go, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. You know, um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a you know, these are scenes from the real script. Right. And some of them were shortened scenes okay. for the short film. Um, but the Empyrean is an awesome evil character. You think the two of the generals are bad. This oh, guy no, is this like, guy, was, this guy is pure. You want to smack him. <laughs> evil, evil, evil. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. I mean, it's uh, it's great. And he's evil with a smile, which is even oh, yeah. scarier because he has the whole power of the world. So. And he also, you know, for people, please watch this because this film is going to be awesome. But he mentioned that they already are in allies with other alien races. Yes, with, with, the, yeah. with the and, negative and, alien races. Yes. Right, and they, they were already um, at that time, back then, going to the moon. They already had bases on the moon, these guys. Wow. So they, they were looking to venture out further, and if they could control somebody who had these powers that Valiant Thor has. Because remember, it's the same thing. It's the same, it's the same manifestation powers that Christ had. Yes. Right. Because, mm -hmm. you know, because when you're up there and you're fully conscious, everybody's of Christ consciousness. That's right. You know, and that's not religious. That is just the terminology. Right. You know that that it is. So if you don't like the Christ consciousness, you can say fully conscious. It's the same exact thing. Still working from there. But you can create because you are now a part of the Godhead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. I love that. And anytime yeah. if anybody who's ever had a visitation from Christ or Buddha or Kuan Yin. Yeah. It's the exact same thing you described. You and I can already talk about. It. It's one of those things that whenever they are in your presence, you can not not weep. That's right. You can't help yeah. it. But it's not a, it's not a sad thing at all. There's so much love that comes in and you're like, this is who I really am. And this is where I really come from. I need to stay in it. It's. Our bodies are not equipped to hold that frequency consistently just yet, but that's what we're on the way to, I feel yes. like. Oh, yeah. Well, not all weeping is sad. I mean, my aunt used to always say she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't, I mean, she cries when something awful happens, obviously, to her or something like that with someone she loves, but she looks at a flower and, oh. and starts crying. Yes, yeah, that's, that's uh, the beauty. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what happened that's to what me in she, my initial my awakening. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Interesting. Saw the beauty yeah. behind everything. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever yourself saw have seen a UFO? I haven't seen um, you know like one close up. I've seen things with uh, night vision binoculars right. uh, where you see you know, and, and uh, you know, they they will point out to us because I used to go to this ET Media Group, which is uh, Steve Bassett. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it's uh, everybody in the film industry trying to do positive things uh, with uh, extraterrestrial oh, stuff. Oh God! So, what a great yeah. organization! It's really terrific. And yeah. they're real picky too. Lots, lots of really cool stuff. So, um, and uh, anyway, Steve will be there in Laughlin as well. So. Um, but, uh, you know, that's all I've seen. But I've, I've known lots of people who have seen things, even mm -hmm. just standing out in Studio City. 
oh, yeah, said, yeah. oh, my God, there was this thing, and it was this triangle just flying low. That's just what like I was this. getting ready to ask you about. Yeah, in yeah. the seventh grade, we, I saw three triangle-shaped ships flying in a triangle formation, and yeah. they were so low. We were, well, we were rednecks. <laughs> we were throwing <laughs> potatoes at it. <laughs> you poor, hey, look me a tater. Poor country <laughs> tater. Trying to hit it with a tater. tater. Will it come down? Uh, but there were three of them, and there were colors I had never seen before in my entire life. They were flying much lower than a football field is, and not one sound. And they were just going super, yeah. super slow, like they were checking everything out. And here's all these little trailer park rats chasing it through the field. And the next day, it was all over the radio and the TV, and then it it was shut down. down. Yeah. And they were like, they were weather balloons. They literally said Sad. these yeah. Why do they always shaped. go to the weather balloon? <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah. yeah. What's a weather balloon? Well, it's, it's a weather balloon. It's a balloon that the government sends up to monitor aspects of the weather. And it goes very, very, very high. And, and they're silver usually. And yeah. they're, so when the it's sun the catches it, it looks like. Not like the Goodyear blimp thing. No, no, no. They're big, long no. silver balloons that go really, okay. really yeah, high. They're yeah, like, a, like a material. I'm Dude, from uh, the Middle East. We don't have those. It's a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they do couldn't we, blame those. Do we know what part of the universe, if you will, that the, the V-shaped ones come from, as it were? Well, here's the thing. You know, they say that the government has a lot of these triangle ones. They do. Well. It's, yeah, they yeah, do. So, they, they built them in the 80s. So, it's, yeah, it's so called, we're uh, not sure. It's a TR-3B. Yeah, 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 so they, yeah. they could be government or they could be something else. Yeah, they've, got anti, yeah. Yeah, they've had anti-gravity since the 40s. Yeah. Well, and then there was a gigantic ship here over the Hollywood sign in the 40s. Oh, yeah, during the war. Yeah, yeah. huge. Yeah. And it was a ship ship. It was not some kind of thing. And everybody's like, we all going to die. And they literally got the military out, and they had the guns aimed for. No, the they thing. were shoot. They shot at it. Yep. Yeah, see. Yeah, they yeah. shot at it. Wow. Um, well, the chat room was asking, um, "Do you think Valiant Thor will be coming back anytime soon? Do you think uh, he'll go to the White House or like he'll show himself? Yeah, again. show himself again." Do you know that that is such a great question? I think at some point um, that he would have to. Do you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, interesting. Interestingly enough, I mean, you know, will it be, you know, who who would get the Valiant Thor interview, right? Or who would, you know, once the world is sort of ready for this kind of stuff, and maybe, maybe it's uh, me making the big feature film, and people start to see this, and they start to say, "Wow, well, this is a part of our reality," and then the maybe the consciousness of the planet calms down a little bit mm -hmm. you know instead of thinking other things you know because people go into fear and people are very very good at protecting their fears and when they protect their fears they think everything's evil because they don't mm -hmm. know what it is well because right. you know, so then they so. start killing anything that's different right, right. Well, exactly well, well and that's what we've been trained to do for so long and very few people will step outside of that and hold feel it first before right. they act that's right second. that's right yeah that's right yeah. all right we have about probably about Five, six, seven minutes left. And I know Walt had a question about some past work you've done. Sure. Well, I know you were on Dune. Yeah. So I was wondering if you tell us about that experience. Sure. I, I worked on that movie for four years oh, wow. uh, with David Lynch. Uh, yes. with the first year, it was just me, David, the uh, producer, Raphael. So you were on the, from the infancy. From the infancy oh, all the way. We used to go have lunch, me, David, and Raphael. And uh, there were two secretaries. We'd go to Bob's Big Boy. <laughs> and Toluca Lake in, in, every day because David oh, liked yeah. to eat there. And, um, you know, I was really young and naive. I didn't know who David Lynch was. I didn't know what Dune was. I had no idea who Frank Herbert was. And I didn't even know who Dino and Raphael Did you know what Spice Laurentiis was? was. I didn't even know what Spice was. But, <laughs> Cinema. you know, and I, and I think that's probably why I kept my job, you know, um, because I was a PA. I was just out of high school. Sean Phillips um, was in that, wasn't she? Sean, uh, Sean? Uh, Sean Phillips, yes. I just saw yeah, her on the yeah. stage in London She's last awesome. month. She's yeah. doing important I became, being I became good friends with her back then. Yeah. I love her. Boy, she's a brilliant actress. She was fantastic. Um, in this yeah. Now, yeah, put your hand in the books. <laughs> <laughs> I can recite every line. She was always that, evil. Yeah, but she's really good. Listen, she's she, great. On the she lived with Peter thing. O'Toole for quite some time. That explains, so she has that to explains to everything. everything. <laughs> Rest his soul. Yeah, no. um, But anyway, um, it was a really, really great experience, you know, all the way through because um, 
I just got to learn about filmmaking. You know, we were on the Universe a lot for three years, and then uh, we shot at a studio's Cherubusco, and we also um, shot at the same time Conan the Destroyer. Oh. So I was working on both films, so going back and forth from here to Mexico. Uh, yeah, uh, in Mexico City. So, um, and then we did all of our post production in Burbank. We went off the lot and went into a, a, a visual effects photo uh, house, um, you know, and uh, finished the film there. For what an the, education! Uh, it was an amazing education. Yeah. I got one of the last autographs of Frank Herbert. It may have been the last because mm. he passed away not long after. There, there was like this old Dune book laying in the thing, and it was in the office. And I went, oh, Frank, could you sign this for me? You know, And he go, oh, sure. So he signed the cover you know, to Craig Frank Herbert, and he always signed whatever date it was, 64, because that's when Dune came out. So, wow. um, so that was amazing. Um, all the, you know, all the actors were amazing. It, I mean, the screen test, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't even know. Kevin Costner tested for that. Um, Val Kilmer. Val wow. Kilmer was, oh my goodness. like, Val Kilmer was going to be Paul Maude Dib until Kyle came along. Well, Kyle was amazing. I Kyle mean, Kyle was found by Elizabeth Lustig up in a little um, theater in Seattle, mm -hmm. and she brought him down. I picked him up at the airport. I... Uh, uh, took him to the Universal Sheraton, um, got him spruced up, brought him in to meet David Lynch, and uh, and then he got a screen test. And I remember sitting there with Rafaela and um, Jane Jenkins, who was mm -hmm. the casting director, and you just got chills when Kyle spoke, Whoa. you know, because everybody else had gone up. Michael Bean had already done his test. Kevin Costner had done his test. Uh, you know, there was like three other guys. Um, Lewis, I think is Tig, um, a few other guys, um, and Val, and then it was Kyle, you hmm. know? And I, I just remember getting chills going, wow, that, that's really good. And Rafaela leaned over. She looked at me. She goes, should we change his last name? <laughs> and I said, no, I like McLaughlin. She goes, OK, we'll keep it. And, that was it. and they <laughs> used it like for Twin Peaks, too. Yeah, I got to make, I got to help him keep his name. I so, love know. it. And then, of course, but, they used him for Twin Peaks, which was a great right. series. Well, they, Dino signed him to an eight-picture deal. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so he, that's why he did Blue Velvet, Blue Velvet and, and you yeah. know. Those kinds of things, and uh, and I, I really think David sort of lived vicariously through Kyle. I think you're, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. so sure, it, it was really quite amazing. You know, so. And you've worked with David Kelly as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I cast Pick of Fences. Pick of Fences. Yep, yep. That was great. Uh, it was an awesome experience. What, I loved it. What experience in all of this connected to the otherworldly beings and or us human beings on this planet what are the two top times you've had to really pinch yourself because you literally cannot believe your life do you know it was actually at the premiere because um wow. uh at the burbank film festival because there was so much press there you know coast to coast came out mm -hmm. paula harris was there wow. um there were all these Tons of things. The Housewives of Beverly Hills. They had something like five cameras. That's um, awesome. There, it was beyond anything I ever experienced. As a matter of fact, it was so overwhelming that the next morning I just sort of sat there catatonic and kind of cried a little bit Good. because it was so. Much it was much so. Absorbed. I had never felt so much love and support ever. You know, to sell out a theater, we sold. You know, we sold out 275 seats. Ne in the, never done in the history of the Burbank Film Festival. And then they added a second screening. Yeah. So that was pretty. I mean, that was really, really um, amazing. And of course, then we won. You know, the next night. You know, uh, for best sci-fi short. You know, so I would say that that experience and, um, you know, but just overall in general it is actually being able now to do projects that are actually changing consciousness mm -hmm. because Hollywood has fought it for so long. And yes. that, you know what? It's like I feel like I've broken that barrier with the short film. There is so much support. You yes. Know? That's yes. good to hear. Um, if anybody gets Guy on TV, my interview mm -hmm. on Open Minds oh, just yes. started airing on yeah. the 14th. So I've gotten floods of emails from all these people who have watched it just thanking me for stepping out you know people just say to me all the time i can't believe somebody in the business like you 
actually talks about this stuff. That's brilliant. You but know? I think and it's I said, good well, that you, you do. Yeah, but I, I said, mean, if yeah. I don't, you know, then nobody else then will. Nobody else if will. You won't, who will? But, and then when I start talking about it, everybody else starts talking yep. about mm-hmm. it. You're sort of kicking the right. door down. And, but you know what I love about this? You have lined up an enormous amount of energy before you came out, as right. it were. Yes. And yeah. you've got some serious help on the other side, not, just yeah. ca- not even counting your soul and right. your heart consciousness. Yeah. And for your fans and course tony's fans too uh stranger at the pentagon pentagon <laughs> so the question is do you really believe there was a stranger in the pentagon yes, yes. of course okay of course. Oh, hold on hell yeah <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> tell you. so they can go to stranger at the pentagon.com in the movie they can pre-order it now and it right. will be available in december it'll be available in december or sooner it might we work sort of praying for sooner but we're giving it a little later date but they can get all the out of print books there for Small donations, Dr. Frank Stranger at the Pentagon, which I autograph. I can get a copy of the script, uh, you know, UFO Conspiracy, Millennium 7, and um, uh, Outwitting Tomorrow. And all the posters, the posters of Victor One, the movie poster, um, you know. Uh, and and I, we found the plates to the, very, to the book poster that used to be in the 60s and 70s in the bookstore. So we got a whole bunch of those printed up so people can get those as well. They're major collector's items. That's so, crazy. crazy. Yeah, and I and I sign everything, you know. Yeah, you do. Uh, I got mine as, signed. You know, for everybody. So, yay. yay. Well, well, before we get out, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. In Laughlin, you're going to be in Laughlin on November 14th, 15th, and 16th. For Correct. And, yes, and people can sign up at starworksusa.com. And then for if they want to get an autographed copy of I Am Tehran, they can go to autobiography of an A-N-E-T dot com or they can get it on Amazon. It's on Kindle and uh, Barnes and Noble Nook as well. With a forward by Sylvia, Sylvia Brown. Sylvia Brown, yeah. And uh, give us give us one thing that that we can take away or give to our listeners that really this the impact again that it has changed your life. Yeah. Do you know the impact is is that I I have gone so deep into unconditional love through all of this experience that um, like right now I'm going through a whole nother level of it. Yeah. And it's it's um, it's really humbling and it's really beautiful and I'm gonna cry just thinking yeah. about it. You know? <laughs> You know, it really is, uh, it's an amazing thing. And, uh, you know, I was being interviewed. They came out to my house to interview me. And all of a sudden, I saw this beam of pink light come down over Mm. the two hosts. And all of a sudden, the female host is asking me a question. All of a sudden, she's like crying. And then the male host closed his eyes. And and I'm like, what are they doing? What's going on? And then I was like, oh. Because I started, you know, I started getting choked up. Yeah. And then they were both just sobbing. They were sobbing. And I looked at the crew. They were sobbing. This, And I said, see, what I experience when I write, when I share that unconditional yeah. love, I say, you guys got that today. So now mm-hmm. you get to go and tell people what you just experienced. And, and that's all the hearts yeah. opening up. Everything connected that's as right. one. The pink light for metaphysicians, paranormal yes. people like myself and psychics. That's unconditional love, love and, yeah. healing. and healing. And all yeah. of that was happening right there, and you saw it, and then yeah. you saw the manifestation of yes. yes, yeah. And you can't experiencers, talk. you you yeah. know that's what it. you know that's what it is. I mean, you know, everybody's reality is different. It's what yes, it it, it's what you experience, you know, and you know, experience doesn't differentiate between the mental, the physical, you know, or the spiritual. Mm-hmm. If you're having a dream, that's right. That affects you and that right. creates you. Do you know, if you're having this amazing, you know, experience in the dream. So, um, you, you know, don't have to come well, back. You're oh, I'd love to. Right. Are you to kidding? You definitely yeah. Come back. Love to. It's unreal. Well, to. we want to thank you so much for being here. You're just wonderful. Oh, I mean, thank you. Thank you, you can, like I said, I can, I can feel the love. I can feel you just watching the film. It really, it really touched me because it, it just, it's kind of like, I guess when like even Christians or any, any religions yes, yeah. to think somebody loves us that much, that much. Yeah. To, to even that come much. forward to say here's right. here's a healing of your planet here's healing of yourself and yeah. so 
So we we thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you Thanks, so Craig. much. I love being here. Thank you. Thanks, You're Craig. coming back. Don't you. worry about it. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we have the director of communication of MUFON, Roger Marsh. He is going to be calling in from the East Coast. And we're going to talk about the latest up-to-date sightings. Maybe even we'll talk UFO about sightings. UFO Maybe even abductions. I don't know. I don't know if he talks about that, but we're going to find out. Mm-hmm. So, on ever Tony Sweet, on Truth Be Told, I'm Tony Sweet. I'm Eddie Connor. I'm Walt Lusk. Well, then, Ali. And we have the wonderful Craig Campobasso. Campobasso. Our yeah. first in studio. Game. Yay! Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're the oh, first in studio. Yeah, for this. All right, so we're going to take a break. We have some stuff we want to show you. And don't forget, we're sponsored by Conscious Life Expo. Get your tickets for 2015. It's coming February. And also... AdventuresUnlimitedPress.com. It's going to be great. All right, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Right here on UBN Radio. Don't touch that dial. (laughs) Right.